Good evening, and welcome to Old St. Mary's Church. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the second Sunday of Lent. I'm Chris, and along with Scott, we will be leading the music. As we draw deeper into the Lenten season, our gathering announcements will be simpler, but you can still find the music and readings for each Mass in this week's worship aid, found on the OSM Parish app or the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Presiding and preaching at Mass today is Father Wilson Smith. Our gathering song is number 577, Gather Us in Mercy, Lord, number 577. Gather us in mercy, Lord. Gather us in mercy, Lord. From the depths we cry to you. From the depths we cry to you. Everywhere that sin abounds, gather us in mercy, Lord. God with grace can wrap us round. From the depths we cry to you. Tree of life, O oh saving cross, gather us in mercy, Lord. Christ our life, all else is lost. From the depths we cry to you. Sheltered, Lord, beneath your wings, gather us in mercy, Lord. To the cross we'll ever cling. From the depths we cry to you, gather us in mercy, Lord. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? The Lord is my life my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life To gaze on the beauty of the Lord To inquire at His temple The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation the Lord is my light and my salvation. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O oh Lord, that I seek. The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory, praise, and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the shining cloud the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Glory, praise, and honor to you, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to depart from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. There are things we wish could last a lifetime, but they don't. Well, the gospel calls us to reckon with the big things that must come to an end, meditating on the smaller endings and noticing the way we wish that they would linger is also instructive. Yeah, the end of jobs, of time living in one place before leaving for another, but also Think, meditate even, on the reality of a good hamburger. I would never give this example on a Friday in Lent, obviously, but it's Saturday. 
so we should be all right. When I was in campus ministry at Ohio State, I got lunch with a student who was thinking about priesthood at this place called the Chop Shop once. And it was a special joy just to sit there and see him devour this thing, like it was his first and last hamburger that he'd ever eaten. But suddenly he paused about halfway through, and I said, is everything cool? And I wish I could give an exact quote, but he said something like, Father Stu, I just don't want it to be over yet. It's very beautiful. If you had heard the fear and longing in his voice, I'd swear you would would never know he was talking about a hamburger. This impulse to indefinitely prolong what is most comforting and consoling to us is part of our condition as citizens of the kingdom, a kingdom of already, but not yet. What do we mean by that? The kingdom of God has been inaugurated by Jesus Christ. He spent his entire ministry talking about it with mustard seeds and oil lamps, big nets of fish of all different kinds, laborers in the vineyard, and tasty hamburgers, right? But what he speaks of is a kingdom that's arrived, that's here and yet will not arrive in fullness until he comes again in glory and raises the dead to glorified bodies like his own. This is the kingdom of glory he's promised, resurrected life in eternity. So the already part of the kingdom, it's already here and it's already evident in many ways. The world is full of just and compassionate people with self-sacrificial hearts who possess those qualities found perfectly in our Lord. These kinds of people are here around us, among our family and our friends. I meet them, I meet you in ministry all the time. Even when we see though those feel-good viral videos and enthusiastically share them, celebrities behaving altruistically, hockey players giving their stick to their number one fan, just doing the right thing, people doing the right thing, the bar may seem low for Christ-like behavior, but we get excited about it, we rejoice in it, because we recognize in some small way, that's it. That's the kingdom. That's what it should look like and feel like it's already here. We also experience that kingdom already here in moments of comfort and peace. The feeling of being with, being held or holding a loved one, standing by the lake at dusk, or anything that makes us want to say, this is just like heaven and I don't want it to end. The kingdom of not yet, right, that can be sometimes too easy to notice. It's evident in the everyday ways that we are not converted, that we fail to be patient and empathize with each other, the ways we step over each other. It's evident in all the ways we fail to live the lives of mercy that Christ has called us to. And it's evident in the blood we shed. Even as we see the kingdom of already in those who have come to their aid, the kingdom of not yet is also evident in the unjust terror of war brought upon the people of Ukraine. Now we could say much more, but I think we can agree. Right in front of us, all around us, is this kingdom of painfully not yet. It's a reality that's in need of transfiguration. Transfiguration means to cross from one reality to another. In this case, to a reality, God willing, much more heavenly. So this tension of the consolation of already and the pain of not yet is what is at play in this transfiguration we hear about today in the gospel. Peter, he just heard a few verses before. This is good to remember. Just a few verses before, he heard that Jesus must soon be taken from them by death. He's consoled by this glorious vision of Jesus conversing with Moses and Elijah, and he seems to begin setting up for the festival of booths, perhaps thinking that if he does this, then Moses and Elijah will stay, and this glorious state that they're in will remain. And then his Lord, his friend, doesn't have to die. 
Maybe these years they've spent wandering the desert, learning from him, serving him as he served them, loving him as he loved them. Maybe if we just stay in this transfiguration moment of glory, none of that has to end. Maybe they can just live in the kingdom of already. But Peter must learn what all of us must learn. Even when it is most painful, not yet. You know, three years ago, I was sitting in a pew in St. Michael's Cathedral in Toronto, Ontario. It's a beautiful place with iconography and statues of the saints and angels all around. I was there because my mother had recently died very suddenly, and so I went up to be with family and to preside at her funeral. And in that cathedral, right, was our Lord Tabernacle. And around me, all of those reminders of the heavenly realm, the saints, the angels, the icons. And I tell you what, sitting there was probably the most consoled and comforted I could have been in that moment. Because I felt closer to mom and I could tell her all the things I wish I had done when she was living. I could have sat there forever and not wandered back into this world where my mother wasn't. But I remembered this conversation that I had with mom more than once, and it was about my name. She hated that people called me Stu or Stewie, right? Even though she called me Stewarty my entire life, it was kind of hypocritical, but it's not the point. She said, your name is Stuart. It means someone who takes care of people, especially when other caretakers are gone. She said, I've known since you were born that you would take care of people. That's your purpose. That's why you're here. And with that, I had the strength to leave and walk back into this world, this kingdom of not yet. So each of us has a role to play in this not-yet-arrived kingdom. We could, all of us, stay here in church, somewhere we feel the consolation of closeness with God and one another. But so long as we stay in here, the kingdom is not being built out there. There are fewer signs of it. There is less hope for it. And this is why I think the Eucharist is not a painting or a piece of music or some kind of entertainment to get lost in. The Eucharist is nourishment to sustain us in our Christian mission until the kingdom of God is here in fullness. So let's celebrate this Eucharist surrounded by the saints and angels. Let's be consoled and nourished by it, truly. But then let's head back out there and transfigure the world. Friends, let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Amen. Let us stand firm in prayer, asking that the Father of love hear us and bring justice and peace to all in need. For church leaders everywhere, may they inspire us to continue the work of transfiguring this world of ours into a reflection of God's kingdom. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world's nations, may they work together to bring lasting peace to a world hungry for peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine who have suffered the violence of military invasion of their country. May they know of our prayers for them and feel our solidarity with them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy on refugees who in the face of war have fled their homes to seek safety in another country. Give strength to all who welcome them and work to provide for their needs. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the sick know comfort and healing. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Harry Hengish, may be surrounded by the saints in the heavenly kingdom. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of everlasting glory, listen to the voices of your faithful people. Draw us into the embrace of your covenantal love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, today a special collection will be taken up in support of the Church in Central and Eastern Europe. Your generosity will provide vital assistance to the essential pastoral needs of the Church in that region. There are special envelopes in the pews for this collection. So we will take up two collections. The first time the baskets are passed will be to receive your regular Old St. Mary's offering. They will be passed again for the church in Central and Eastern Europe. Those of you joining us from home can mail in your contributions to the parish office or donate online by clicking on the Give button at oldstmarys.com. As always, we thank you so much for your generosity. Please join in singing number 977, Transform Us, number 977. Transform us as you transfigured Stood apart on Tabor's height Lead us up our sacred mountains Search us with revealing light Lift us from where we have fallen, full of questions filled with fright. Transform us as you transfigured, once spoke with those holy ones we surrendered by the witness of those saints whose work is done live in this world as your body Chosen daughters, chosen sons. Transform us as you transfigured. Would not stay within a shrine. Keep us from our great temptation. Time and truth we call. 
quickly bind. Lead us down those daily pathways where our love is not confined. Transform us as you transfigured stood apart on tables height lead us up our sacred mountains search us with revealing light lift us from where we of questions filled with fright. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, 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 God. Peace. On Newsday, we told us peccata mundi. Misa re re no mis on news day we told us peccata mundi Misa re re no mis on news day we told us peccata mundi. Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 575, Mercy, O God, 
number 575. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Now at this table you call us together, guests of the Lamb at the Paschal Feast. No one will thirst, none will go away empty. Here all divisions will cease. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Outcast and sinner, belong at this table. You gather the ones whom the world disowns. Here you give strength to the lost and rejected. Here you have made them a home. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Bread come from heaven in Christ's body broken will nourish and heal those who seek your face. Send us as bread to the poor and the hungry. Send us to heal and embrace. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free. Mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. Send down your mercy to set us free.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Friends, today's bulletin lists a number of Lenten opportunities, including Stations of the Cross on Friday evenings, a Teze prayer service this Wednesday, and the Paulist Fathers National Lenten Retreat this Saturday. Please do pick up a copy of the bulletin from the tables in the commons, or as always, you can read it at oldstmarys.com. Uh, our parish is once again participating in CRS Rice Bowl, that's Catholic Relief Services Lenten Program. After Mass, you're invited to take a rice bowl and to use the easy and fun resources to deepen your Lenten experience. Our prayers, fasting, and almsgiving this Lenten season will help CRS continue to provide life-saving assistance in nearly 100 countries. You can take a rice bowl from the basket as you leave Mass. Just to, uh, we just ask that you return them on the Sunday after Easter. Our Just One Item collection is next weekend, so when shopping this week, please consider purchasing something extra for our neighbors at St. James, such as a bar of soap, a roll of toilet paper, a tube of toothpaste, container of deodorant, and something like that. Uh, and as we shared last week, Pope Francis wants to hear from you. Please join us this coming week to share your experience of the church today as Old St. Mary's participates in the Synod. We need you to share your joys and hopes for the church and also your disappointments and challenges. Our listening sessions start tomorrow morning after the 8 a.m. and the 11 a.m. Masses, as well as this coming Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Refreshments will be provided. So please do see the bulletin and our Pope Francis poster in the Commons for all that information. Thank you. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let's bow our heads for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Please join in singing number 692, Christ be our light, number 692. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. 